Hello, and this is a teaching segment for how to make whimsical field daisies. Besides your cardstock, you will need a blotter to put inside the card to avoid bleed. You will need a sharpie, extra fine point in black, for the outline of the flowers. And then you need whatever color highlighters that you would like to use to color them in. Optionally, you may need a ruler a pencil and eraser and that is if you feel that you are not comfortable enough to um, free to draw the uh, flowers the outline of the flowers freehand so I've already sort of started and here I did use a ruler one inch and I positioned the bottoms of my flowers throughout and I actually sort of work in three rows the top row this middle row that alternates in between the spaces a bit and then the bottom row. And also you can move your flowers up to the top if you choose. I left a little space so that I can put a greeting there. And once you have done, uh, you have uh, placed all your bottoms, then it's easy enough to just make little hills from one side to the other. And you notice that they're all slightly different. Some are really high, some are lower. And that's all you need to do. And then you add the petals. So if, and you add, uh, when you add the petals, I tend to do a few a little flatter on the outside and then sort of work around. If that is too difficult, you just drop the bottom ones, col um, do them, and then just add the side ones afterwards like that. Once you have completed that then it's time to put the stems on and I start from the bottom up putting the stem and I tend to curve them. You don't need to and I do not put the stems, I never um, move the stems up over a, f a flower, always in behind and if I, where I can't eyeball it too well where it should start again then I use a ruler for that. So, and I tend to curve. You don't need to, so there's one I'm going to have to check to see where it should actually come out. Right about there, I think, is good. And once you've got all the stems in, there's another one I'm going to have to eyeball with a ruler. Whoop, and one more to get it to the bottom, right there. So all my stems are in place, then it's time to add the leaves. And again, I start from the bottom, and I just curl them a bit. The leaves can go over other stems, but I don't like to have the flowers crossed over. And they can go off the page. And then I do the second one, and I kind of eyeball where the spaces are, and that's where the curl of the leaves are to fill in those spaces. So depending on, and there's a, a, a leaf that's going to go in behind the flower. It looks like this one will too. And then the final one, I have a big space here, so I'll fill that in there. Not such a big space, it'll go in behind the flower. Here's another big space, I'll curl in. Start a little differently. There's a big space here, and kind of there. So two leaves per stem, and then you are done. And then you just need to um, fill in your colors. And I tend to, because you've got, you're working with two or three, and you want to kind of alternate the colors. So I start with blue on one top corner, and then I'll fill in the blue on the bottom opposite corner. I do the same with the orange top so that you get some sense of alternating colors and it's a more pleasing end effect. Okay, If you go a little over the line it's not a big deal. The opposite on the lower end. And I do tend to do like three and three and then add yellow. You don't need to, you can just do the um, two colors, but I find that the colors pop, all of them pop a bit more when you add a little bit of contrast. And that's it. So I hope you give it a try and I hope you have fun with it. See you next time. Bye for now.